Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. In this video, guys, we're test for independence naman ng ating pag-uusapan. Without further ado, let's get this lesson started. Kay square test for independence, ito ang ginagamit kung significant relationship ang objective na makita ng iyong study. Kung dependent ba or independent yung isang variable sa kabila. Ginagamit din to if the data is non-parametric and it does not assume a normal distribution. So, pwedeng skewed ang ating distribution, pwedeng gamitan nyo ng chi-square. Ang chi-square is x squared. So, hindi na natin kailangan kuhanin ang square root nito. Yan na mismo ang chi-square natin. Summation of O minus E squared. O is the observed value. E is, e is the expected value. And our degrees of freedom is number of columns minus 1 times the number of rows minus 1. So, ano yung column, ano yung rows na yan? It gives us an idea na gagawa tayo ng table. At ang tawag sa table na yon ay contingency table. Itong observed value, ito yung observe mo mismo, yung galing sa research mo, yung galing sa interview, yung galing sa experiment. Itong expected value, ito ay kinocompute pa. Kung paano compute it? We will multiply the row total times column total divided by the grand total. So, for each observed value na nandun sa contingency table, hahanapin natin sila or hahanapan natin sila ng expected value. Kapag naman tayo ay nag interpret after getting the x squared value, hahanapin natin yung p-value niya. Mahirap kung mamanumanuhin natin yung pag-compute ng p-value, kaya ilalagay ko sa description box yung link ng p-value calculator na ginagamit ko for chi-square. After getting the p-value, i-compare natin yun sa alpha or sa level of significance. Kung ang p-value natin ay mas malaki kaysa alpha, we have to accept the null hypothesis. If the p-value is less than alpha, we have to reject the null hypothesis. So to better understand, let's have this example. So there's a study that wants to determine whether there is a relationship between drugging and blood pressure. Kaya merong 210 na in-interview at kinlasify yung mga naging result dito sa ating contingency table. So ang gagamitin natin na alpha is 0 0.05. So we will set up the null hypothesis. There is no significant relationship between drugging and blood pressure. So kung mapapansin nyo, iba na. Yung ating null hypothesis, wala na yung mga mu equals to or mu less than, mu greater than. Kasi nga, this is non-parametric. Hindi natin kailangan yung mga values na yan. Hindi na rin natin i-identify kung one-tailed or two-tailed kasi nga non-parametric. Ma-identify lang natin yun kung merong ganitong mga symbols sa ating hypothesis. Ayusin lang natin tong table para magkaroon ng space for the expected. So, lahat ng ating entries ay yan yung ating observed. So, kukuhanin natin yung expected. So, sabihin natin na ang expected, tapos iname natin 34. That it means that this is the expected value for 34. We have the row total. Ang ibig sabihin ng row total ay yung Kung nasaan yung cell na yon, yung total niya sa row na yon, which is 112, ay dapat daw i-multiply sa column total. So, dito sa 49. At i-divide natin siya sa grand total, which is 210. So, we have here 112 times 49. And then, diretso natin i-divide sa 210. I-round off ang sagot sa second decimal number, we have 26.13. Next, for E sub 57, ibig sabihin yung expected itong 57, we have the row total, that's 112, times the column total, 120, divided by the grand total, which is 210. Again, we can multiply this directly, round off, Ay, hindi naman pala kailang around of. This is exactly 64. Next, 
we have here E sub 21. Ito naman. Ang kanyang row total is 112 pa din, pero ang column total niya is 41. We have 21.87. Ginawa ko itong first row ng mga expected values. Now, I'll be pausing for 10 seconds. Do the expected value for this second row. After 10 seconds, i-reveal -re natin ang tamang sagot. You should arrive with these values. Yan. So, kung merong error, double check your solution dahil yan po ang ating mga expected values for each of the observed values. And then, ayusin lang natin yung contingency table kasi di ba recall na ang ating chi-square ay summation ng O minus E squared over E. So, ang bawat isang O at E, ima-minus natin. Tapos, pagka-minus, square natin yung difference. Tapos pagka-square, i-divide natin sa E. Masyadong mahaba yung process at hindi naman kaya dito sa mga small spaces na to. Kaya aayusin natin yung table na parang ganito. Pinagsama ko yung jogger at yung low. Ibig sabihin nun ay ito. Yung jogger at yung low. That is 34 for observed. Kaya 34 yung nandito. And 26.13 yung ating expected. So ganun ang ginawa ko sa lahat. Ima-minus natin, we have 34 minus 26.13, we have 7.87. Squaring that value, we have 61.9369. So dito, dahil nag-solve pa lang tayo, wala munang mag-round off sa second decimal number. Puro muna tayo third or fourth decimal number. And then that number 61.9369, i-divide natin sa E. I-round off natin sa pang-apat. Meron tayong 3703. We will do the same with all the rows that you can see here. So, pwedeng i-pause mo muna to for 10 seconds. Gawin mo on your own. And then after 10 seconds, i-reveal natin ang tamang sagot. you should arrive with these values. Kung mapapansin nyo, magkapareho ito, I mean, in terms of numbers, of course, ito din, magkaparehong 7, magkaparehong 0.87, nagkakatalo lang sila sa sign. Isa positive, isa negative. So, nagkataon lang yun. Tapos, afterwards, after getting all the entries here, we have to take the sum of this last column at pag inad natin tong lahat, ito na yung ating 6.7933. Recall natin na ang chi-square ay kailangan lang ng summation nitong column na to. So meaning, our chi-square value is 6.79. Ayan, kung makikita nyo, oh, last step na to, kaya pwede na tayong mag-round off sa second decimal number. So using 6.79, as your chi-square value, access the link that I put in the description para madirect kayo sa webpage na p-value calculator for chi-square. Itatanong lang sa inyo ang chi-square value na 6.79 at degrees of freedom. O nga pala, hindi pa natin yun nasusolve. So, ang DF natin, is number of column, we have low, moderate, and high. That's 3 minus 1 times number of rows, jogger and non-jogger. So 2 minus 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. So ang DF natin ay 2. Tapos ang x square value natin is 6.79. Once you access that link, i-input nyo lang ang ating 
chi-square value na 6.79, i-input nyo din ang ating degrees of freedom at itong ating alpha. It should give you a p-value of 0.0346. And comparing that to 0.05, hmm, mas maliit itong ating p-value. So dahil mas maliit ang p-value, we have to reject this null hypothesis and we should say that there is a significant relationship between jogging and blood pressure. So that's it kung paano tayo gumamit ng chi-square test for independence. Thank you for watching! If you learned from this video, please give it a huge thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell icon. See you on our next video!